and welcome to the News X Sunday Guardian Roundtable. Well, this week we're going to try and do one of our explanatory roundtables to try and you know decode an issue that a lot of people are now talking about. We heard the whispers earlier. In fact, it was raised in one the roundtable about a year ago. But now a lot of people are talking about the metaverse. So, if someone like, especially someone like me who has no clue what is happening, which is why I called in the panel of experts to try and explain to all of us what is this metaverse. Literally translated, it means beyond the universe. But of course, there is a virtual reality. It's even beyond the internet. It's you know, you know, you're, early on we were browsing the net. Now I think we are immersed in it. We become part of that virtual world. There are digital avatars by which we can actually go and experience a virtual world. People are buying land in this virtual world. People are actually transacting. There are coffee shops. Shops, you can buy a Gucci outfit. That's where we are headed. You can actually have an alternate avatar of yours that lives in this, that socializes there, that transacts business there, that earns money. All this in a virtual world. And we have Facebook, of course, investing in it. Uh, that's when I think the really the uh, attention was flagged off when Facebook changed its name to Meta. And it says it's taking social connections to a whole new level. So what does this exactly mean? And should one invest in it? Why is a metaverse better than a conversation like this, a Zoom conversation which I can have? I'm meeting my friends, I'm transacting. So why should one invest in the metaverse? Joining me to explain these things and answer all our questions, I have a panel of experts. I have Karthik Ayer. He is the founder of Blockchain Monk, an R&D firm that specializes in blockchain technologies. He's also an ambassador of the P2P Foundation, where Satoshi published the Bitcoin client. Karthik has spent over a decade on the blockchain industry and now advises large governments and private institutions on their blockchain strategy. I have Arjun Sodhi, he's an eminent architect and a metaverse consultant. He's based in New Delhi with almost three decades of experience. Uh, being a technology aware architect, Arjun is one of the few professionals today who understands the challenges and complexities of combining a present day physical world with a virtual metaverse world. Dr. Jayajit Bhattacharya, he's a president of the Center for Digital Economic Policy Research. Jayajit has been in the cutting edge of digital technology for over 25 years. Uh, Jayajit, since you are usually my go-to person to explain things, so can I first ask you to slip into your professorial mode and explain to all of us what exactly is this metaverse? So, um, you know, there's been a movement towards uh, depicting people in, uh, in three dimensions. Um, so, you know, till now what we had was an internet where you had, um, you know, in a, a two-dimensional depiction of everything and a, a two-dimensional screen to interact with, right? So you would have a laptop screen where you could go to an e-commerce site or go to a, a browser and see others' pictures and so on and so forth. So it was a limited kind of interaction. If in, in fact, if I go back for, uh, further, what used to be called as Web 1.0, where you would only be able to download information. You would only be consuming information. Then we moved to Web 2.0, where you could have an interactive session where you could also contribute to the information, which is what led to the, the social media, the Facebooks, the Twitters, and, uh, and so on and so forth, where content was coming from the users also. Now we are moving to a dimension where you could actually see other people in some kind of a form and shape, which is what you mentioned as avatar. So, which is essentially a replica, uh, the digital replica of people. Uh, so, you could wear some kind of a technology which is basically a, a, a virtual reality technology, which um, you know you wear on your on your eyes, and therefore you could see other people in three dimension. And uh, and you could create an entire universe out there. So you could have different buildings. You can either have a replica of existing structures. You can have entire Delhi in a virtual reality situation. So you can have Delhi in metaverse. So the same shops that you see outside, you can see them uh, in the metaverse, which means that instead of walking down to the nearest shop, you can actually walk into the metaverse uh, without leaving your home and then choosing whatever you want to choose from the shop and actually buying and walking off. So that's the, the vision of what Metaverse should be. You can also create a new thing inside Metaverse, right? And you can then have possibilities which don't exist in the real world because you can combine digital and physical and, um, you know, uh, and, and you can have, in fact, architectures which the physical world doesn't support. Uh, given that, uh, you know, Arjun is an architect, um, you can do those architectures which defy physics in this metaverse. So it's a it's a whole new brave world out there 
Uh, we are just placing the first bricks, metaphor metaphorically speaking, out there. Uh, it's going to be a long, long journey uh, because the standards are still evolving. Uh, are the metaverses uh, interoperable becomes an issue or we lead to having a, a fragmented metaverse. Imagine if your internet was different from my internet, is different from China's internet and Russia's internet, then the value of internet goes down significantly. Uh, that's also a threat in the internet, but that's a different issue. But we need to ensure that that does not happen in the metaverse and there is interoperability. But there's also the issue of access. Um, these uh, devices which let you have uh, the virtual reality experience and the metaverse experience are quite expensive and are also quite bulky. And if it's so not get, uh, on the positives and what is it, and then we'll go into the downside of it. Uh, Karthik, uh, you've been also dealing, you know, you're, uh, that's one transact business also, you know, socially we can enter, but uh, the, you're saying you can also own property, Jajit says, uh, you know, you can buy stuff. Uh, this is not real stuff, it's virtual stuff. So what, why would I buy it? What will that dress do for me if I, if I can't wear it? So last conversation we had, uh, Priya, you know, I quoted, uh, Iskons, uh, Srila Prabhupada, this time I want to quote Adi Shankara. So Adi Shankara said, uh, Brahma Satyam Jagat Mithya, that Brahman is the ultimate reality, everything else is a, is an illusion. And so, you know, we're going from 7 billion people to 10 billion people on the planet. So imagine if everybody wants to own a house, everybody wants to own a car, everybody has to fly for everything. I think we're going to end up destroying the world. So there's a very interesting book written by Klaus Schwab called The Fourth Industrial Revolution. Klaus Schwab the uh, chairman of the... Uh, Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum, a great visionary, you know, somebody who's you know written you know ex very interesting books about the future, and one of the things that he talks about is you know how to improve uh, productivity, how to you know improve uh, human societies with fourth industrial revolution technologies. So you know instead of like physically moving around, physically traveling, physically sort of exploiting resources, like we did in the twentieth century, I think people will just be happy you know, living in this mitya, you know, this, as we say in Sanskrit, this, this illusion that we are creating, but the illusion will not be in the physical world, but it'll be in this new world that we've created, which is like a reality within a reality, which is called as a metaverse. Uh, you know, which is the meta the concept of meta itself is very uh, similar to mitya, you know, that the illusion in Hebrew, meta means you're dead. It's, it, it feels like it's an afterlife. But uh, imagine, uh, Priya, if everybody has to be, in the metaverse and already the population in the metaverse is exploding like Decentraland, uh, you have uh, like Sandbox, uh, you have uh, Roblox, you have a lot of interesting companies uh, you know, uh, that are building metaverses. And people, young people in their 15s, 20s, uh, in early 30s, they're all hanging around there, big conferences, music festivals, everything is happening in the metaverse. And you, as you rightly said, you can virtually transport your metaverse, you know, your avatar, uh, into the metaverse, and you could interact with other people. So if everybody is going to be hanging around in the metaverse, then you need to own the land there, and land is finite. And so, you know, the price for decentralized lands, land plots have been going to the roof. Uh, so a lot of people now cannot afford to buy land, so they have to lease land. So big brands are getting there, and they're all leasing land. There are, you know, brilliant architects like uh, Arjun, you know, and others, yeah, I think who are, you know, probably going to sort of capitalize on this revolution. I hope more Indians do that, because you know, India is, uh, is a country of great art, architecture, and culture, and we are not uh, new architects. We've been building temples for 11,000, 12,000 years, you know, the pre-antediluvian civilization. So so I think, you know, if, if the metaverse is something, it is for, for India, for Indian architects, for Indian artists, uh, Indian creative folks to leverage this. Designs have you been already been involved in in terms of uh, for the meta world? I think or metaverse, I don't know what whatever you call it. Uh, you I know. Do you use three D technology? How do you do it? Um, so, you know, Priya, thank you for having me here. I think it's a very interesting um, you know environment. This is which is building up. It's building up so fast and so rapidly accelerating in different ways uh, that one is very hard pressed to try and understand it fully. I don't think any one of us, and we are, you know, I have very eminent people here um, from the field, but I think that we are very hard pressed to understand this technology. 
it is it is evolving so fast there is so much of so much of new um uh, paces that it takes within a week within a month within you know six months i mean there has been a huge um uh, industry created within the last one and a half years of nfts um, we don't understand this fully um you know we must be humbled by it firstly to understand it um there is a huge amount of um um focus on it uh, people are wanting to put a lot of uh, investments into it companies are wanting to invest into it individuals institutions governments everybody wants to utilize it for the best possible uh, you know um goals however we we have a responsibility to try and create what we think is is um you know a safe environment um there are laws and legal um experts uh, i'm sure you know experts like karthik and jj um uh, are looking at you know ever evolving legal references for this kind of environment but what i'd like to explain to you is how did we come here what causes us to 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 move towards this metaverse why is everybody w- wanting to sh- stream into it let's say because it's a digital world it's virtual it is not tangible all throughout history um uh, we have found that entertainment uh, aspirations dreams um you know um trade everything has caused a a, a people to congregate i think that we must understand that this platform digital platform called the metaverse whether it is one metaverse or whether there are multiple metaverses being created by different you know people or in- institutions or industries or 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 let's say uh, governments what we have is people wish to come on board to experience something to interact with each other to forget um the the hardships they're facing for the momentary in- entry into the met- metaverse that is how movies occurred music occurred um a- uh, entertainment events um artwork everything is to elevate the human senses right we 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 work hard every day then we like to yeah, relax and is this is it just entertainment i mean now it looks like there is you know you can even do business over there that's the- of course so so of course i'll explain that to you when i to take a break yeah when i when i when i come into the virtual world come into a place called like you know there are so many of them five six um places where you can buy virtual real estate when you enter that you wish to create an identity you wish to create um an experience for somebody whether you have a company whether you're an industry whether you are a whether you're an individual right this is the key when you create that experience people come and visit it that is going to create the trade when there is footfall like there is in social media you have huge amounts of advertisement you have people coming in to see what it is is curiosity but you create an environment which can then uh, catalyze industry and consumer products and and virtual products jaji if it's not it's a non tangible world if if i'm going to meet a friend but i can't hug the friend then the, the whole experience of the meeting is not there so is it just i mean uh, i still don't get it so we already doing many things which are virtual right you're buying crypto and you don't get a coin in your hand uh you're using upi and you don't see a rupee in your hand um you're buying online and um you know um the goods come in subsequently um so there are products which are completely digital in nature and then there are products which arise from digital and then become physical and the other way around where there are products which are physical and then become digital so when you buy your stocks you buy them uh, you know as stocks and then they become uh, digital when they go into the the exchange in that sense you know the share certificates get dematerialized so there is a constant movement from physical to digital and the other way around uh and there is therefore value in both the physical and the digital the value depends on what the market uh, perceives as the value right so um you know you have had multiple conversations on crypto uh what is the value of uh, one bitcoin it depends on what people are are believing that value is because they can derive some value out of it whatever that value may be and and therefore in the uh in the metaverse uh if people are buying quote unquote plots of land uh they believe there is some value in it because probably you know nike or reebok or somebody else is holding the next plot of land or next shop 
and when people uh, in the metaverse come and visit those uh, shops then perhaps they will also come down and visit uh, your plot of land that you have bought and therefore you can get some economic value out of it so that's how the the economic value is coming up in the metaverse what are people buying are they, uh, in terms of you know people are already buying land you're saying that land is already is running out uh, but it's a virtual space so how is land running out yeah no this is very interesting because i was uh, explaining to my father uh, about uh, you know a consulting project we did you know where this uh, big artist was do- looking to do a concert in the metaverse mm. and he wanted to purchase virtual clothes or meta clothes and virtual shoes there are a lot of sneaker brands now in the metaverse there are a lot of fashion designers in the metaverse so you know and there are avatar designers who so basically you know transport the avatar into the metaverse so there's a whole new economy i mean you have to like let's assume that you want to have new sex on the metaverse you have to first you know buy a land on decentral land and then you have to get a you know 3d virtual designer who can build an unreal engine or one of those technologies to build the studio and then you have to you know have marketing and branding people who put banner ads across the metaverse to promote your tv channel and then you know uh, we'll have to create these big streaming walls where people can watch the show on the metaverse so and then so and then if you're pre if you're going to be uh, you know transported in the metaverse you'll have to have a virtual avatar of yourself and so you'll have to have virtual glasses you'll have to have virtual clothes so virtual chairs and there's a huge economy there what of an effort for just doing this i mean i can have do the same by just a zoom call Um, well it, well it is but you know the whole idea is uh, this idea of immersive reality so you know the 1980s was all about text interface so the way we interacted was through text and then we had graphical user interfaces 2d now the next you know the whole history of software development has been about the rise in level of abstraction you know from machine language to as we uh, look at uh, text language to you know we're in windows and apple and now this is the next level of evolution where we have this immersive reality which is also you know a thing which is very dangerous because if you use a vr headset i mean you're it, it does it feels like you're there a decent 2d like in this conversation you know if the conversation goes badly you can just walk away but this immersive reality there are all kinds of issues all kinds of complexities that are coming in which is why you know i think it is very very important for governments you know like the government of india to start regulating because with the billions of people are going to be there you know it's important for for us to control the narrative you know it's important to regulate some of these things because a violence in the metaverse feels real and abuse in the metaverse feels real so it's not just the joy and the elation that one feels in immersive reality but also the negative sides of things so so we are in the technological singularity priya where the pace of change is exponential so we can no longer wait for governments to catch up but governments have to anticipate some of these things as arjun and, and jayjit uh, rightly pointed out from a policy perspective so i think these are things which are very very important for us uh, to grasp and, and make sense of i think your design how do you design i mean what is the, what all have you been asked to design uh, so um you know um actually what happens is in the design part it's it's a specific kind of software that you use it's more like video gaming right uh, it's not got the physics it's not got the structural uh, limitations it's not got you know uh, limitations of height or of municipal you know um, bylaws it's got it's got no um, no it's you have unlimited freedom to create whatever you like Uh, within that set parcel of yours uh, whatever you say uh, you have to position it somewhere so the parcel of land uh, is what is called the plot of land and you it's it's a certain given specific size you can buy many of them you can b- combine them and create a lot you can create uh, you know a single piece or m- people invest into it so that they can rent it out well you design with there's a voxel um, software where you can create um, a slightly old uh, older looking environment uh, you you can create real engine which is video gaming uh, if you can create anything that you like um, without with passion i think you would be able to inspire people and that's what is the metaverse you need to walk in anybody who comes to your place the the aesthetics the beauty the grandeur the 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 allure has to be that he should go back with a memorable experience so that is what designers like us are trying to do we're trying to enhance the experience of a visitor for a for a company for a product for fashion for for consumer products everything i think for a home it's where you walk in and he can show exhibit a person who is a tech 
tech uh, enabled uh, uh, you know software um, millionaire would like to buy uh, an nft and exhibit it to his friends he'll invite them to that environment but the nft is worth um, you know hundreds of thousand dollars or millions you know if you don't have an environment to exhibit it like satvis has um, you know a great um, show going which is it's continuously you have to continuously prep it this content has to be live it's not that you do something there and then you forget about it and then you know next month again you do something it's not like that you have to purchase something build an environment and then stream live into it so whoever comes at whatever time in whichever time zone actually has something to see and you you've created an experience for them to come in and that is what is not going just to uh, visual right. there's also audio the whole, i mean and so just designing a home this obviously you have to, yeah it's even haptics now haptics are so so complex that you can actually feel i can feel the handshake that you do that's what's being developed now that's why i'm saying technology is moving so fast you can taste you can taste um something if you lick the screen a uh, spe- special screen that's what is happening but it's it's very nascent it's not something which is you know common you can you can actually smell uh, through the through the metaverse if you have the right equipment of course it's expensive but it's going there and that's the that's the excitement that's the key that people expect and we hope and we dream and we will engage in an environment where we can actually do whatever we do in a physical world we can do it over there and that is going to drive consumerism which is huge capital um you know flows so that's where we are i think there is the downside of it uh, uh, you know apart from getting people interested it's it's it sounds very expensive a lot of equipment you need i mean uh, do you see this actually happening and how long do you see uh, five ten years so it'll be evolving as um, you know as both karthik and uh, arjun said we are really at the you know starting line or even not even cross the starting line in that sense because so many things have to be figured out but the moment there is a new technology it uh, disrupts the the current fabric of how we work and and learn and and live and so on and so forth so uh, things like karthik mentioned abuse happening and therefore um, who is the regulatory authority that will regulate it is it under Your the favorite question isn't it <laughs> is it under the indian government or is it under the us government or is it under the, under the un or itu and so on and so forth so if you, there is a you know uh, a, a avatar created by a german does something which uh, to an indian uh, who's responsible for this behavior is under whose jurisdiction are these plots of quote and quote uh, land being sold uh, which government recognizes it uh, what are the civil suits that will happen and so on and so forth there's lots to be uh, to be fixed and uh, to be uh, you know regulated so that there is a much more um, amenable uh, operating framework that is out there as of now it's a wild wild west right right and that's how technology develops first it has to be wild 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 west we need to allow people to develop and then see what's going wrong rather than jumping in right in the beginning and say hey lots of things are going wrong so let's let the government step in uh, there will be a time that we would need government and slash governments to step in uh, and um, and and there are many things that are going wrong as of now you know the, there are abuses going on there will be disputes going on uh, and there will be the issue of uh, of suzerainty uh, in the in the metaverse that will happen and will it be that the corporates will dominate and not the government and the governments don't have a space will governments be subservient to to corporates and say please let me have a virtual embassy in your metaverse otherwise you know i don't have a presence uh, and and embassies can be shut down by companies so uh, those are are come some of the issues that will start coming up as we move forward but it it's at least four to five years away before we start seeing uh, these issues in any significant manner last point karthik so do we see now for instance facebook has got a um, um, first early mover advantage so will they be like um, the facebook land and uh, you know if microsoft if someone else comes it will be the apple comes it will be the apple land how, how I mean, uh, where do you see this going Yeah, there are about 100 metaverses now, uh, Priya. So this started, uh, you know, in fact, the concept of the metaverse itself is very old. I mean, there's a book called Snow Crash by Neil Stephenson where he talks about this idea. It's from the 1990s. So But people have been... It's not a utopian. <laughs> it's, yeah, this whole utopian land. And, and there, there are about 100 metaverses right now. And one of the things that people are doing now is to basically build this teleportation machines or software where you can teleport between metaverses. So, you know, for example, Decentraland, Sandbox, you know, you'll have Facebook's Meta, you have Roblox. So there are all these metaverses that are coming and, 
and so you know you could move from one festival in decentraland to let's say an after party in uh, in in sandbox and so these things are currently in play i mean there'll be standards there'll be uh, apis and there'll be integration between multiple metaverses uh but i think it's going to be very exciting because the growth of metaverse is not linear it's exponential which basically means you know it's like a we'll see the future happening much much sooner than we think uh, it will happen so so it's a very exciting time to be speaking about it very opportune and very uh, sort of uh, you know uh, as as you say the the, the highness are hot you got to strike when the highness hot right so it's like that right now arjun any last word of caution from you or you're saying right now is the time for optimism arjun i think um, i think we should be optimistic optimistic i think uh, you know we should be cautious but we should be optimistic it's going to lead to a lot of um, you know i think that we only touched upon one of the one or two of the main topics but there's a lot of social impact of the metaverse there is a lot of impact on on uh, corporate social responsibility there's a lot of impact on sustainability conflict zones everything is going to be affected by this metaverse it's not just entertainment and you know uh, industry it's going to be in every sphere of our lives and and that in any sound like the real world yeah sorry i'm just cutting you short because we are totally out of time absolutely it is it will soon merge you see the virtual and the dig- and the physical world are going to merge in a point which is a platform digital platform and it will develop through that and that's where people uh, you know uh, people governments institutions we all have to come together it's collaborative it cannot be singular there is no one company going to rule this uh, environment it is collaborative uh, we will have uh, teams where people like you know uh, kartik and jayjit will be sitting with with environments uh, and people and deciding and we'll be sitting i could be sitting and talking about the environments uh, you know that are being digitally created but it's all collab- collaborative there is no On one person note, okay we're totally out of time thank you so much and i can see this is a conversation that we'll need a whole lot more time for so i'm going to call you all back but until then thank you all for this uh, i'll say beginners course on this thank you so much thank you so much thank you for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon